You've got your chicken. You've got your thin bleach. Soak the chicken's ass in bleach and then hoist the bastard into the sea. Come on. Before Calvin Harris had nine top 10 singles in the UK charts off of one album, breaking Michael Jackson's record. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing thing to be able to say. To, that you beat out Michael Jackson. Yeah, okay. in the UK. In the, in, <laughs> only in the UK. In the UK. <laughs> Before he became Taylor's longest lasting boy toy. Taylor Swift. A thing about film noir looking she's, Taylor she's Swift. Not, she's just the opposite of my type. Before Calvin Harris top Forbes highest paid DJs list three years in a row. You've seen where I like to sit. Let me take you to my kitchen now. This is my kitchen. Before Calvin's fifth record, Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1, debuted at number two on the UK album charts. Calvin Harris released a new song with Ariana Grande called Heat Stroke. I think Heat Stroke is garbage. Calvin Harris was recording demos of future electronic hits by the age of 15 in his Scottish bedroom. No doubt to the annoyance of his entire family and the surrounding neighbors, he had such a fever interest in the genre that it took him over completely. By 2002, he signed his first record deal and started gaining popularity on MySpace. You remember MySpace, right? It's the dinosaur that gave birth to Facebook. Well, he made the most of that and was discovered by Tommy Sunshine of Xylophone Jones Recordings, his first big step in what has been a pretty impressive career. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Calvin Harris prior to fame, prior to Tay Tay, here for you and before they were famous. I said that because what a stud he's become. Has any of you ever had a dream where you were with the opposite of a girl? Now in the past, we've done similar videos on other DJs, including uh, Deadmau5 and Diplo. In fact, Deadmau5 got back to us, and Diplo, that one's hilarious. Anyways, be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below. Now let's roll that intro. Beautiful. Now the final step of this. Is setting him on fire. Calvin Harris was born Adam Richard Wiles on January 17, 1984, in Dumfries, Scotland. His father, a biochemist, his mother Pamela, well, she raised him and his two older siblings, Edward and Sophie. Growing up, he wanted to be a professional football player, but then in his mid teens, he discovered electronic music and turned his bedroom into the world's saddest club. Calvin's family originates from England and his parents moved from Oxford to Dumfries prior to having Calvin. He attended Dumfries High School by day and stacked the shelves of a local grocery store by night, as well as working at a fish processing facility to save up for DJ gear. Following high school, Calvin was offered a record contract with a small label called Prima Fassi, through whom he released two songs, De Bongos and Brighter Days, under the name Stufer. With these tracks under his belt, Calvin, or Stufer, he decided to move to the big city of London to try and make it as a DJ. Unfortunately, his lack of income and the lack of opportunities, well, it had him moving back to Dumfries with his tail tucked between his legs. But before he returned to mom and dad, he recorded a handful of tracks in London, although only one of these, Let Me Know, has since surfaced online. working on his craft back at Dumfries, but it wouldn't be until 2006 when his hard work would finally pay off. For nearly half a decade, he was forced to upload his recordings to MySpace. Remarkably, Calvin was soon discovered by Mark Galepsi, a talent manager, who signed him based on his home recorded songs. Yeah! That was probably the same noise he made when he signed his management publishing and recording deal in 2006 and began serious work on his debut album. I created Disco, which would be released the following June. The record featured Harris singing all the songs, something he has slowly phased out of his work over the course of his five studio albums. The success of this album, including singles, Acceptable in the 80s, and The Girls, turned the spotlight towards Calvin and gave him the opportunity to collaborate with some artists on their own albums. We're talking Kylie Minogue and Dizzy Rascal. As his star power grew, Calvin worked away on his second album, Ready for the Weekend, which was then released in August of 2009. During this process, Calvin was apparently not ready for the weekend. During a routine trip through London's Heathrow Airport, 
Harris reportedly told the media that he lost his laptop, which contained the only copy of his still in progress second album. He would later go on to admit that the story was a lie, and although he did lose his bags, the laptop was never lost, and he just needed to buy himself more time to work on the record. Turns out it was worth it. This record marked the end of Calvin's regular singing on his own albums, as newfound fame allowed him to collaborate with some of Pop's biggest names. I need to open this jam. Go on. Don't make it look hard. Yeah, that right there was part of a short lived web series in which Calvin invited celebrities to uh, open jam jars. That's it. Though having access to stars like Katy Perry for casual jam opening sessions would be reason enough to step away from the mic, Calvin provided a different reason for the transition, saying, I thought I'd exhausted every avenue on the two albums, and it takes a long time to make me sound good, which is why I stopped singing live as well. I'd like to think of someone who's better looking, a better singer, better dancer to be the front person for the song. One of those people would not be Lady Gaga, however, when offered the opportunity to collaborate with the singer in 2008, he allegedly turned it down, claiming he had no idea who she was. Calvin found someone more suitable in Rihanna, who he would tour with in 2011 as part of her Loud tour and went on to produce We Found Love and Where Have You Been With Her. The former of which would appear on his groundbreaking album 18 Months. It was also during this time that Calvin began making more frequent television appearances. Yes, that is Calvin Harris with a pineapple on his head. Jumping up on stage, he used to get all the girls, now he just gets kicked out. This X Factor stage crashing incident back in 2010 led to Calvin being banned from the show for life. But that didn't stop his list of collaborations from growing. Soon the DJ was working with Florence Welsh, LMFAO, Mary J. Blige, Example and The Killers. In addition to the star studded list of singers he brought on for the hit packed 18 months, the record which was released on October 26, 2012 would feature 9 top 10 UK singles breaking a record formerly held by Michael Jackson. Calvin's new record didn't last long though, back in March of this year, Ed Sheeran's Divide album had 10 singles reach the UK top 10, shattering Calvin's 4 and a half year reign. Plus, Calvin hasn't even been on Game of Thrones yet. For hands of gold are always cold, but a woman's hands are warm. Now, Calvin, he stepped out as Taylor's new man at the Billboard Awards in 2015, and that by no means came out of nowhere. In the time leading up to this, Calvin released his fourth album, Motion, on Halloween of 2014, featuring the likes of Ellie Goulding, Big Sean, Gwen Stefani, and Haim. He played to the second largest crowd in Coachella history that April and that December, he was named Armani's new underwear model for the spring summer 2015 line, which we can imagine got the attention of Taylor. That's right, this guy. Hello, I am Calvin Harris, how are you? I'm well, and I'm going to be talking about some everyday objects. Yeah, he went from that to being an Armani underwear model dating Taylor Swift. So kids, there's hope for anyone. Maybe even me. And this isn't all he accomplished in June of 2015. The UK version of Glamour magazine named Calvin their man of the year. What a turnaround. But despite the big come up for the Dumfries kid, perhaps Taylor always was the girl for him. I think I need someone to be a bit off. He's just got to stay out of them rubber tugs. You know what I mean? Anyways, as for the rest of the story, well, that's pretty much it because this is before they're famous and a bit of a different one. Anyways, guys, be sure to let us know who you want us to document next in the comments down below. My name is Michael McGrudden. We do all sorts of bios on rappers, singers, actresses. We even do some Instagram models. We're looking for your suggestions down below. Hit us up. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom! <laughs>